Hi, <laughs> it's Natasia here. This is my first YouTube video. Um, if you're wondering who I am, I am a digital marketer who is obsessed with fashion and self-love and self-care, which is the main reason why I wanted to start this channel because I've struggled a lot with loving myself and it took a lot of work and many years in the making to get to the point where I am at today. And today is my 31st birthday. So I figured if this ain't a better time, then when will be? So I wanted to share my journey with you guys about self-love and I hope that my story resonates with some of you um, and can also help inspire a sense of hope if you are feeling down and you are struggling with self-worth and self-love. There is a light at the end of the tunnel. It was really hard for me to see that at times, especially when I was younger, but I pushed through it because I knew that I was happy before. And if I was happy before, then maybe I could learn to be happy again. So I didn't always hate myself. <laughs> that started in my teen years. And one thing I wanna clear up from the beginning is that I wasn't bullied. You know, I had friends, I had several friends. I had a loving family. My mom has always been my biggest cheerleader and my dad always told me that I could accomplish anything if I worked hard enough for it. So I, I had a good home life and I had loving friends, but at some point in, in high school, I just started becoming very self-conscious. And I, I know that period is hard for a lot of people, especially girls, because you're starting to become very aware of your body and you start comparing yourself to other girls and the women that you see on TV. And then you start getting interested in boys and wanting to date. And if you struggle with that, you start thinking, what, well, is there something wrong with me? Am I not attractive enough? Am I not pretty enough? And that's sort of what started happening. Um, my parents did also go through a phase where they were arguing uh, a lot. And I think that also just compounded it. And in high school, I forgot my first real boyfriend and he ended up cheating on me within a few months. And that really hurt too. So it was just a whole bunch of little things that added up. And sooner or later, I just started having such negative thoughts about myself. And this was from somebody who was always goofy, always loving, always happy with everything. And then all of a sudden, I just felt this, this emptiness inside. And it was, it was scary for me. And I always get emotional. <laughs> when I talk about it still because it's it's hard to bring me back to that state of mind. Um, it still feels so real and like it was yesterday, even though it also seems like it was an eternity ago. And I struggled a lot with the way that I talked to myself. I was always very hard on myself and it wasn't just in regards to my looks. It was in regards to anything. I could find a way to pick myself apart um, in anything that I did. So I could look into the mirror and just critique every little thing I saw, like, look at your skin, it's awful. You have so much acne. Why is my nose so big? Like, why do I have this bump on my nose? I hate it. Why am I so flat chested? Like I hit puberty so many years ago and still nothing here. Like, why are my thighs so thick? Why am I too skinny? 
uh, honestly, like everything, even to my pores, like my shoulders, I was so self-conscious of my body. And outside of just the way that I looked, I also struggled with being confident in my skills and my self-worth like if i i was i was very much a perfectionist growing up and i still struggle with it sometimes <laughs> it comes back and bites me in the ass um but i've definitely improved from when i was younger and i think in my mind i i wanted to please my parents so much because they moved here like I, I was originally born in I'm originally born in I'm originally from Brazil and my parents moved here when I was really young uh, when I was about four and it was through a job transfer my my mom's company sent her here and she accepted it because she thought this would be an amazing opportunity for for my daughter to have two citizenships to make this better life, right? The American dream. And so I felt like I had to try so hard to make it worth it for them. I had to prove that I was this amazing daughter, even though they already thought I was amazing. And I was so hard on myself to the point of if I got a B plus instead of an A, I was crushed. I would I would start questioning myself like how like how do you not know this like how did you not get an A like why are you not perfect because I wanted to prove that I was good enough that I was a good daughter that I was smart that like all of this hard work meant something and so it was it wasn't just in regards to how I looked when I looked in the mirror but it was also my self-worth and I look back at journal entries that I used to write back in those days when I was around like 16 to 18. And I cry whenever I read them because it's almost like I don't recognize that person anymore. There was so much hate for myself. Um, <laughs> there were several entries where I would write like, why would anybody like you? Who would want to be friends with you? Who would want to date you? Like, why would anyone love you? And there was one in particular where I said, where I wrote, um, maybe if I just vanished, everybody would be better off. And I slowly started having those thoughts infiltrating my mind, like if I could just disappear, if I could just vanish, like maybe everything would be better. Maybe everybody else would be so much happier if I were gone. And I remember distinctly one day, <laughs> looking at yeah, I was in I was in our kitchen and I was looking at the drawer with the cutlery and staring at the knives and just thinking it could be so easy it could be so easy if I just had the courage to do it and that scared me it scared me a lot because I think inside I I, I knew that that's not what I wanted I didn't want to die I didn't want to disappear. I just wanted the emptiness to go away. I wanted the hate that I had for myself to go away. I, I think that's what made me realize that I, I needed to do something. I needed to change because I didn't like where my thoughts were heading. And I was starting to scare myself. And I was drained. And I was tired of having to be two different people, the Natasha that was pretending that everybody, that everything was okay when I was out in public. And then the Natasha when I was in my room alone with my thoughts and beating myself up with them. So first of all, I wish I would have gotten help. I wish 
I could have spoken to somebody. My best friend at the time and who still remains my best friend, um, Nina, we've been together, together, like I talk about us like we're a couple. <laughs> um, we've been friends for over 15 years now and she she's like my sister and she didn't even know. That's how good I was at hiding it. And that's something that I wanna highlight. Depression isn't just crying all the time or, you know, laying in bed and being antisocial. Some people are very good at hiding it and putting on a facade because they don't wanna be a burden they don't think that their feelings matter and they don't think anybody would care if they said anything. And that's the mindset I had at least. So I put on a fake smile and I went about my day at school, talking to my friends, being kind to them. And then, you know, there would be times during the day where I'd excuse myself from class, go to the bathroom and just cry for five minutes because I was just unhappy because I didn't like myself and most people didn't know and I struggled a lot with that and so I decided when I graduated high school that something needed to change and I was tired of being sick and tired and tired of hating myself and being my number one worst enemy. So what I did, which I, again, I should have gotten help and I recommend like opening up to somebody or going to see a therapist if you can, because they can help you sort out these feelings that you're having in your mind. And I didn't do that. I feel like my journey could have been a lot easier if I did open up to somebody, but I didn't. So what I did is I kind of forced myself to be uncomfortable and put myself out there. I started forcing myself to look in the mirror and say, I love myself, even though at first I thought it was absolutely ridiculous. And I'm like, yeah, girl, don't lie to yourself, um, but I did it anyways. And whenever one of those negative thoughts started popping up in my head, like, oh, look at those thighs, like they're, your body's so weird, oh, your nose, I would, I would be aware of it and I'd try to shut it down and think of other things and try to think about all of the things that I do love about myself, no matter how small they were. Like, I like my eyes, I think my eyes are pretty. Or I, you know, I like my smile. And I try to push those thoughts away and replace them with something more positive or distract myself, which was hard, but the more I did it, the easier it got. And I was so uncomfortable in my own skin that I only owned, I think, one pair of shorts and I had stopped wearing mini skirts altogether. And whenever I went to the beach, I would wear a bikini, but then I would wear shorts on top and either a t-shirt or a tank top because I was convinced that if I could see all of these flaws when I looked in the mirror, then they must be obvious to everybody, right? And I didn't want anybody making fun of me or pointing out my imperfections. So I forced myself to buy a pair of shorts and go out and go to the mall wearing them. And I psyched myself out so much. I was panicking. Um, I, I think I had gone with my mom and she didn't even know how like the mental gymnastics I was doing inside my head. And I was just like, oh my God, what if people like look at my legs? What if people like whisper about me and make me feel bad about myself? And I, you know, I tried to push those thoughts away and I went to the mall and guess what? Nothing happened. 
no one pulled me aside and told me like, why are you wearing shorts? Shouldn't be wearing them. Nobody laughed at me. Nobody pointed at me. Nobody cared. And I was like, oh, well, that wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. And like with those little steps day after day, I started pushing myself a little more. And at the same time, and that's the hard thing because when you have low self-esteem, it's not always in just one aspect of your life. It can be in multiple. So I was self-conscious about my body, but I also was self-conscious about just me as a person and what I brought to the table and my value and my self-worth. So even as I was getting better went with my self-esteem in regards to my body, and that was slowly increasing, over here, my self-worth, it was still unbalanced. So that part actually took a lot longer for me um, than accepting my body especially after I graduated college and I started working um, and getting got my first real job and having to work with so many people that had a lot more experience than me and realizing like, oh my God, there's so much I don't know yet. And I would be so hard on myself for not knowing things that of course you're not gonna know yet because you haven't experienced them yet. And that perfectionism started coming out. Like I would be too scared to speak up at meetings. I would be too scared to voice my opinion or if something, I wasn't happy with something or I thought I was being disrespected, I wouldn't open my mouth. I was still self-conscious with my body in the sense that yes, when I was out and about on my regular day, I would dress with more confidence but then at work i was so self-conscious and i would wear like frumpy clothes because i wanted to be taken seriously and i remember struggling so much to get motivated and dressed in the morning because i would just sit there trying to figure out what do i wear like i can't figure out what to wear and it's like duh because you don't like anything in your closet because it's not you you're trying to be this person you're not and me always loving fashion to me it gives me that extra boost of confidence in the morning and I've realized that if I'm wearing something that doesn't make me feel good like I'm not going to feel as good and essentially that's what I was doing to myself every morning before going to work I would put on something that wasn't me to hide myself to hide who I am and my personality and try to dress how I thought I should be dressing. And it just, it wasn't motivating. And on top of that, I was still struggling with confidence in my skills. The same thing that ha used to happen when I would get a B on a test and I would freak out and automatically think, well, there you go, you clearly don't know anything, you clearly don't know everything, so you can't do anything right. The same thing would start popping up when I was at work and I would get constructive criticism or you know, somebody would critique my work. I would already go back to that mindset like, oh my God, you're not perfect, you're not doing this right, like how did you mess that up? Why didn't you see that from the beginning? And I would be so, hard on myself and that's when I started realizing you thought you had gotten more confident but you're still struggling in this area so I I kept instead of just making it all just about my body image I started realizing I also need to work on my self-worth it's like I've gotten better at accepting my body. I also need to accept that I'm just never going to be perfect and that's okay. And I need to be okay with making mistakes. And I need to know that I do have something to bring to the table and that no, I don't know everything, 
but I'm constantly learning. I'm constantly a work in progress. Everybody's always a work in progress. And I need to come to accept that. And that's what took the longest for me. And again, I, I still struggle with perfectionism from time to time, but I'm self-aware enough now that I can recognize it and I can flip the switch and realize mm, you're being a little irrational right now. It's okay, you made a mistake, learn from it. And so I started listening to a lot of self-help books I started doing daily affirmations, which I know a lot of people, like I hear good things and bad things from different people saying like, oh, it's amazing, it helped me so much. Oh, it's woo woo nonsense, like it doesn't do anything. For me personally, it helped and you have to be consistent with it. And I kept reminding myself like, if you don't put yourself out there, if you don't get comfortable with making mistakes, you're never going to grow. And once I started pushing myself to get uncomfortable, the same way I pushed myself to put on those pair of shorts and walk into that mall, even though I was worried that people were gonna judge me and point at me, I started doing the same thing, but at work. I started raising my hand in meetings even though that little voice in my head was like, mm, what if they think you're stupid? What if they don't like your idea? And then as I started doing that, I started realizing just like how I was self-conscious about my looks for no reason, I was self-conscious about my opinions and my skills. And the worst thing that can happen is just somebody says like, oh, no, I don't think that would work for this oh, that's a great idea, but maybe for another time, nobody was going you know, to point at me and laugh at me and like fire me just because I said an idea that they didn't end up choosing. So as I started doing those things bit by bit, I started becoming more confident in my skills. I started realizing that I did have something to bring to the table and the best part of all of it is that I started realizing that the more risks I take, that the more times I voice my opinion, the more opportunities I would get. If I didn't start doing that, I don't think I would have ever been promoted or gotten the, all of the raises that I got because I started learning to promote myself and I started learning to become okay with doing things that I might not know all of the answers to, but realizing that those opportunities would give me a chance to grow and learn something new and building my skill set. And I will say that probably by my mid twenties, I finally was 100% confident, not just with my body, but with my self-worth. And it's crazy when you embark on that journey of self-love and self-development. I can't say or pinpoint the exact day where I woke up and I realized I love myself. You know, I can't, but I just remember like all, it's like you just go on with your life and you're living it. And then one day you just like realize huh, I don't hate myself anymore. And slowly you start seeing that whenever you look in the mirror, you actually love the person staring back at you. And it's such an incredible feeling. And I want everybody to feel that way. I want everybody to know that they're incredible and special and magical and that any flaw that you may see is so insignificant compared to your worth. And when you hate yourself, when you have low self-worth, you you're seeing the world through this negative lens and it distorts your perception of reality. I used to automatically think that even if somebody gave me a compliment, they were just saying it to be nice. 
even if my mom told me I was beautiful, I would think, well, she's my mom. She's supposed to say that. Any, I, I couldn't believe in anything anybody ever told me because I didn't believe in it myself. How could somebody think I'm beautiful if I don't think I'm beautiful? How could somebody think that I did an amazing job at this project when all I can see is the mistakes and the things that I could have done better that I th thought I should have known from the get-go. And that's the thing that is so important to realize when you're not happy with yourself. You see the world through this twisted lens and little things that are so harmless and insignificant seem so dangerous and scary. And once I started loving myself, I started seeing everything clearer. And there was something my mom used to tell me. And she, she said to me, I wish you could see how beautiful you really are. And now I can finally see it. And I want everybody to be able to see themselves a little more clearly because we give so much love sometimes to others and we give so much of ourselves to other people that we forget to love ourselves as well and give ourselves some of that kindness that we distribute so freely to everyone else. So that's mainly why I wanted to start this channel and I want to inspire women and men as well to realize that they're, they're amazing, that yes, they have flaws, but we all have flaws because it's part of being human. And as long as we're not hurting others and we're loving ourselves and believing in our purpose, then there's nothing wrong with that. It's okay to be imperfect. It's okay not to have all the answers. Life would be boring if you had all the answers, if you think about it. So I wanna inspire people to feel good about themselves, to love themselves. And I think that fashion also ties into that because I know from my own journey and from speaking with friends as well, how the way you see yourself, how your self-worth can affect the way that you dress. I spent so many years dressing in a way that didn't make me happy. I spent so many years trying to dress myself for what I expected people wanted. I dressed myself for other people to try to fit in, to try to look cool. And I realized that didn't make me happy because I would look in my closet and I'm like, this isn't me. And I was so scared to wear the things that I actually wanted to wear because I was too afraid to stand out. And I was too afraid to have somebody say something to me and say that I looked ridiculous. But I realized that as long as I feel comfortable and confident and love what I'm wearing, I, sh I don't really care what other people think. So that's why I want this channel to focus on fashion and self-love, two things that I'm very passionate about. And this ended up being a little bit longer than I expected, but I hope that at least a part of my story resonated with you. And I want you to know that if you're going through a period of self-doubt and depression right now. I hope that you can see that there is a light at the end of the tunnel. I'm so grateful that I didn't give up because there's so much that I would have missed out on. There's so many beautiful memories that I've created along the way and so many amazing friendships and love. I can say that I love 
not only myself, but I just love the world and people so much more deeply now. And 18 year old me would have given anything to feel that. So I want you to know that you're not alone and that you matter and that you are loved. And I'll post more videos on the channel about self-love and fashion and ways to dress yourself to make yourself feel happy and be com confident in your own skin. So if you guys have any ideas or things that you would also like to, to see or hear from me, let me know in the comments below. Um, and that's it. <laughs> I hope you guys have an amazing day, an amazing week, and remember, you're loved.